My name's Carly, and I have the pleasure of interviewing Ev Hermanson. We're going to hear about his testimony, his favorite verse, and his favorite hymn. So, Ev, tell me how you came to know the Lord. Well, it was a long time ago. I was born and raised in Minnesota, and we had a Lutheran church there in this small town, and they had what's called a Luther League program, which is from freshmen to seniors. Uh, and I was at one of these programs one night, and this young college student came up to me and grabbed my arm and says, Come with me. I have some good news for you. So I went along with him, and we went over to a quiet area, and he explained the plan of salvation to me, you know, how you accept the Lord and follow him throughout your life. And uh, that's exactly what I've done. I accepted the Lord at that particular time, and uh, I've tried my best to, uh, to live for Jesus and to do whatever I can to follow his leading. Uh, prayer helps. Uh, we've had good times, bad times. We've had tragedy in our family. And uh, I, I know that uh, the Lord's hand has been, been on my shoulder all the way through, and uh, that's how we've gotten through these things. And uh, one, one of the things that uh, where I could use my testimony is I was stationed up in Lake Arrowhead. I was employed by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, mm -hmm. and I was on patrol. And to give you some idea, I saw this lady driving a station wagon and had a young bunch of young boys with her. So I flipped on the red lights and stopped her. I walked over to her car and I said, no, put your license away. I said, I want to congratulate you the way you're driving up here in the mountain area. It's really great because you're watching out for these young people that you have with you. And uh, I may have said one or two other words. Then I turned around and walked away. And she had a stunned look on her face. Those kids were wondering, he isn't going to write us a ticket? He isn't going to do this? He isn't going to do that? No. That's the way I learned to operate in my career in law enforcement. Uh, you surprise people. Uh, you let them know that you're not a big old meanie yeah. <laughs> driving in a marked car trying to stop them and you know, things like that. But no, it. Uh, I had a fantastic career. I worked for them for 25 years, and uh, I would do it all over again. And uh, I had many experiences. And one experience I do want to mention, and that is one night I had a reserve deputy with me, and we drove by a market that was located outside of Victorville a little ways. Well, it had been burglarized a number of times, and so I shut the lights off and pulled in very slowly. We could see in the front window there were two guys, young people, in there trying to break open a machine. So I told my reserve deputy, go cover the back door and I'll take the front. So I started talking to these two young people. I said, come on out. Uh, we aren't going to hurt you. Uh, just uh, give yourselves up and, you know, we'll go from here. They took off running uh, towards the back door. There was my reserve deputy standing there, collared both of them, brought them to the front where I was. And I said, okay, Lloyd, here's the reserve deputy. I said, keep him covered. I asked the guys to get down on their knees. And I stood next to them. And I said, now shut your eyes. We're going to pray. I didn't shut my eyes. I wanted yes. to keep an eye on them. 
that uh, I prayed for them, prayed for their salvation, yeah. that they would change their life around. And uh, as far as I kept contact with one young man, and he did. Oh. He did. This, that, that was the incident that had him change his life around. Uh, whether he accepted Christ in the process, I don't know. But he became a different individual totally. Yeah. Um, how have you seen the Lord work in your life? Well, I think the first time I really saw the Lord work in my life was when I met my wife. Oh. Uh, I had prayed long and hard many times that I would sometime meet the right woman that would eventually become my wife. Well, it happened. My wife, my future wife, was from California. I was from Minnesota, and we met on a blind date in Maryland. Oh. And uh, that blind date uh, turned into uh, 64 years of marriage thus far in counting. Uh, but I praise the Lord every day that uh, it was my wife, Alice, that I met. Yeah. Uh, we've had a fantastic uh, relationship, and uh, it's with the Lord's blessing all the way through. Like I mentioned earlier, we had uh, two children. We had a boy and a girl. Uh, the oldest was a daughter when she was 18. Well, she was actually 16, and she had contracted leukemia. And uh, when she was 18 and a half, she had just finished high school in Yucaipa, and she passed away. And uh, I know she's up there in heaven. Oh, she loved the Lord, and uh, uh, she gave her, her testimony whenever she had a chance. Our son, uh, who just turned 60 this past week, uh, is a judge, and uh, he is a, a no-nonsense individual. He's a lot like me. <laughs> he. There's right, there's wrong, there's a way of doing things, and, uh, you know, better as much as possible walk the straight and narrow, yeah. and uh, if you know the Lord, you better count on his blessing as you go along. Yeah. And uh, being a judge, he sees a lot of different things up there and uh, where he's at, and uh, consequently, uh a lot of people learn their lessons very quickly. Yeah. Uh, to give one little example, there was a young man, well, the high school class uh, had come to the courtroom that day, and uh, there was one young man that insisted on keeping his ball cap on. Well, my son says, uh, would you please remove your cap, please? The young man just sat there like, you know, he didn't hear anything. Yeah. And uh, so my son called the bailiff. He says, will you go over and take care of that situation? The uh, bailiff walked over to where the young man was sitting. He got about three or four feet away, and <laughs> the cap was gone. Yeah. So he, uh, he realized that he wasn't in control. Yeah. So, but anyway, there are incidents like that that happen, and uh, I praise the Lord every day, even though my daughter is in heaven as an angel. Uh, the time we had with her is fantastic. All I can say is that we had her for 18 years. I know people that have their children for mere hours, days, weeks, months, years, whatever you want to say about it. But we had it for 18 and a half years, and it was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Our uh, son uh, is quite an individual because he was in a motorcycle accident when he was uh, 14 years old, and his left arm is paralyzed, and he has no use of it whatsoever. Yeah. So his left arm is in a sling all the time, and every he's right-handed with everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
where he's sitting on the bench, handling people, no big problem. And uh, I praise the Lord every day that uh, both of the children knew the Lord. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, well, if you teach them the way to go, when they are old, they will not depart from it. Yeah. So. Can you share with us your favorite um, verse or passage and why? Yes. Uh, it actually is John 3.16. Okay. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So if we believe in Christ, we're going to believe in God also, and we accept him, that he died for our sins, he rose again, and he has entered into heaven. Accepting Christ is the main thing. And John 3.16 pretty well covers, I feel, pretty well covers the whole uh, gospel. The whole gamut or yeah. the the whole uh, biblical story of, you know, accepting Christ and uh, what Christ did on our behalf. Yeah, exactly. Atonement for our sins. Exactly. So, um, what's your favorite hymn or worship song and why? Uh, my favorite worship song is Living for Jesus. And it goes like this, living for Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please him in all that I do, yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessing for me. And the chorus goes, now, Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give my life to thee, for thou in thine atonement did give thy life for me. I owe no other master. My heart shall be thy throne. My life I give, henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. I don't know how many times that when I was in law enforcement that I would be humming or singing this song and a lot of times I changed the words, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it still came out fine because I was praising the Lord in the process. Exactly. And yes, living for Jesus, I think we can all uh, use that as an example. It's in the local, it's in the church uh, hymn book, and I am not sure exactly what the, uh, the number is, but uh, I would advise people to Look it up, yeah. and uh, you may start humming this yourself when you have some spare time. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I've never heard that one, but it sounds like a good one. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, It's been a, a wonderful blessing and encouraging for me because living a life that is true and striving to please him and all that you do, and uh, I think we should all Take that to heart and try and do that on a daily basis.